Welcome to Proverbs for Life Today, a ministry of ChristAssembly.org. My name is Bert Allen. Today we come to day 146, a loving hind today. Solomon was discussing with his son why you must avoid immorality in your life and why you must be satisfied with the wife of your youth. Of course, nothing in this study will really make sense to you if you've never been born again by faith in Jesus Christ as Savior, that he died for you on that cross. But you must believe that, and you must have a day in your life where you said, I believe you died for me, and I believe you were raised on the third day, and I know that I'm forgiven because you paid the death penalty for me. Well, if you want to know more about that, then stick around to the end of the video and I'll be standing in front of a bricks background and we'll share with you from the scriptures how you can be born again today. But for now, let's dive into the study. Day 146, a loving hind today. As a loving hind and a graceful doe, let her breast satisfy you at all times. What did Solomon say to his son about the breasts of the wife of his youth? Solomon said they should satisfy his son at all times. God revealed sexual truth in the Bible. Part of training young men in the ways of wisdom includes training them about sexual matters. Solomon described a loving hind. In this context, Solomon meant a female deer as a symbol of gentleness. He also described a graceful deer using the same symbolism for kindness. Solomon warned his son to avoid immorality with strangers. He addressed the issue of sexual satisfaction. God intended the breast of the son's wife to be a means of satisfaction for the son. Solomon's son should not embrace the breast of strangers seeking sexual satisfaction. Writing on the inspiration of God, Solomon provided the wisdom of God regarding sexual satisfaction. God created sexual desires and gave his born-again children the spiritual power to maintain sexual control. God gave breast to the wife, in part, for the satisfaction of the husband. In addition to other functions, the wife's breasts were intended to be a sexual blessing to the husband. All times. Number one, loving. Solomon used the image of a loving female deer to explain satis sexual satisfaction. Number two, hind. Just as a loving hind cares for her offspring, so also the wife should care for her husband. Number three, graceful. Solomon also described a graceful doe. Number four, doe. The graceful doe also cares for her offspring, emphasizing the quality of grace. Number five, breasts. Building upon the hind and doe symbolism, Solomon, Solomon instructed his son to be satisfied with the breasts of his wife. Number six, satisfy. Those breasts should satisfy her husband just as the doe and hind satisfied her offspring. Number seven, times. After Solomon warned his son about the dangers of immorality with a stranger, he then instructed his son to be satisfied with the breast of his wife at all times. Summary for today. We live wisely in the family of God by remembering the loving hind and graceful doe. We live more wisely in the family of God by never seeking sexual satisfaction except from our wives. We live together wisely in the family of God by praising God that he understands sexual desires and how best to satisfy them in marriage. Application for today. Today we may live wisely in the family of God by remembering the loving hind and graceful doe. Will you live wisely in the family of God today by seeking sexual satisfaction from the breasts of your wife? Hallelujah. Before I close the video, I'd like to share with you four verses about eternal life. I often ask people this simple question. Why should Jesus let you into heaven? And the answer to that question surprises many people because it comes from the Bible and it's simple and it's clear. Most folks, when they hear that question, they tell me, well, I've been good or 
tried to do more good than bad, or I tried hard, or I've done a lot of nice things, and I hope God will let me into heaven. They somehow think if their good works outweigh their bad works, that God will let them in. But God says, actually, I'll let people into heaven because of a free gift. But the story from Jesus starts with four verses, and I'm going to read them one at a time. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23 You see, for every person who lives today on earth in human flesh, we've all sinned, every one of us. We've all told a lie. We've all done or said something that made somebody else angry, and we were doing it out of anger ourselves. We've all done things to hurt other people at one time or another. God says that's all sin, and I look upon that as falling short of my glory, God says. God says we should never fall short of his standard, which is the glory of God. Well, is it serious that we've sinned? Should I be worried about that? Everybody sinned. Why should I worry? Well, consider Romans 6.23. For the wages of sin is death, that all of us deserve the death penalty. At the moment we sinned, we incurred the death penalty for the smallest sin or the biggest sin. I'm happy that Romans 6.23 continues and says, But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. You see, if you've been listening carefully and thinking about what the Bible says, so far we've learned that we're all sinners, we all fall short of the glory of God, and we all deserve the death penalty. This doesn't sound like good news until you read the last part of that last verse. It says that God has a free gift for all of us. It's in Christ Jesus our Lord, and it's eternal life. The free gift of eternal life that only Jesus Christ can give you. He said he's the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through him. Why would God offer us this great gift if we're all sinners? Well, Romans 5, 8 tells us. It says, But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He died for us. He died in our place. God loves sinners like you and like me. He died in my place and in your place. He paid the death penalty for me. I often illustrate the free gift like this. That I have this old Nissan truck. It has 285,000 miles on it. It's not that great a truck. It sits at the beach every day. But I illustrate the point this way. I hold up the keys to my truck and I say, I'm going to make you a symbolic gift of my truck. But until you take the keys out of my hand, it's not your truck yet. Well, let me tell you what I mean. A lot of people have been going to church for years. They know all about Jesus. They can quote verses about Jesus. But they know in their heart that they're not quite right with God. And there's never been a day in their life where they've been born again and they know it. You see, they're just staring at the keys in God's hand and he's offering you the free gift today of saying, reach out by faith and receive that free gift and take it into your heart today. Receive the free gift. Okay, how do we do that? Well, Romans 10.9 tells us how to do that. It says that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And he means saved from the death penalty eternal destruction. So we can receive that free gift right now by faith and we can pray a prayer together. I urge you to pray with me. I'm going to pray it right now. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you love me. I confess that I am a sinner and I fall short of the glory of God. I confess too that I deserve the wages of sin, which is death. But Lord, you offer me the free gift of eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. I accept that free gift right now. I believe that you love me and that God died on the cross for me, that Jesus Christ is God and he died on the cross for me. You paid the death penalty for me, Lord Jesus. Thank you so much. 
I confess with my mouth Jesus is Lord, and I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. I repent of my sins, and I accept that free gift, Lord. Thank you so much that you have forgiven me. In your name I pray. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer with me, I'd love you to send me an email and we'll rejoice together. Send me the email at friend at christassembly.org. That's friend at christassembly.org. I look forward to hearing from you. Hallelujah. <laughs>